Fashion emergency hotline. Help, I'm hosting my annual pool party and I need to look fierce. How about an amazing bathing suit? It can't just be a bathing suit. It needs to be a major ensemble. You need to go to Old Navy for the hottest swimwear, super soft tees and tanks, and the cutest summer dresses. Old Navy? Yes. Right now, get 30% off your purchase or 40% off if you use your Old Navy card. You'll find shorts, tees, and swimwear. 40% off? Oh, I'm sold. Now I can focus on my pool float decor. Thank you. Don't thank me. Thank Old Navy. Valid 714 to 718. Some exclusions apply. Subject to credit approval. See store for details. Driving slow on Sunday morning, no, I think I'll take it fast. But seeing your love got my foot accelerating on the gas. They say nothing lasts forever, a thing of the past. Like a black and white cast, and we feel time is plastic. Picture perfect, call it plasma, take my breath away. Asthma got me thanking God for you, but what more could I ask for? Addicted to the smooth, melodic tone of your conversation. Love got me crazy, I call it so amazing. This is Robin. I'm listening to the Pulse of the Northern Neck Radio Show. This is David Scarborough, and I'm listening to Pulse of the Northern Neck Radio. Yes, yes, ladies and gentlemen, good morning, good morning, good morning to you. Good morning to you. Good morning, good morning, good morning to you. Man, I nailed it. I nailed it. Yes. I am your host. I don't know if I want to give my name after that one, but her name is Deandra. Yeah. 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 My name. I know Deandra, like, I never know what he's going to do when we start this show off. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, good morning, Deandra. How are you feeling this morning? 
I'm good, Orlando. I'm good, brother. Um, good morning, everyone. I am present. <laughs> I'm, right. I'm right. present for today. It's Thursday, I'm present. I'm here. <laughs> You're it's present like and accounted and... for. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go down to the roll call. Deandra, Deandra, Deon. Up, oh, she skipped Calas okay. again. I, I don't know what we're gonna do with that young lady. She needs to stop right. skipping class so much. <laughs> See, Deandra try to. Deandra try to tell y'all that you know she's always been a been a good girl, but I know different. I uh-uh. know different. Nah. No, I'm joking. We don't want to talk about skip class. I've done that a few times, and I <laughs> said I would never, ever, ever, ever do that again. So, if you're thinking about skipping class when you go back to school, please don't don't do that. Just stay in class. Be smart. Do smart things. <laughs> There you go. There you go. I like that. I like that. I'm going to tell you, the first time I ever skipped class, well, actually, the first time I ever skipped school, uh, friends friends of mine, it was like three or four friends of mine were saying, man, come on, you know, the last class is gym or whatever, so we could just, you know, we could skip that and just go ahead and go home and, you know, relax, chill out or whatever. So I'm like, Psh. I'm like, okay, yeah, you're right. You know, it's just gym, whatever. It doesn't matter. And then all of a sudden, we get... <laughs> We walk up, we go to an apartment complex. I was living in an apartment complex at the time up there in um up there in uh Maryland, uh um Gateway Square apartment. Shout out to Gateway Square, all my PG County folks out there. What's up, what's up? Um <clears throat> walked up that way. All of a sudden I look up the hill and lo and behold my first time ever cutting class, my first time ever cutting school, and who's standing up there at the corner because I didn't know she got off work early? My mom. I'm like, oh, my <laughs> goodness. This this has got to be a sign. Oh, Boy, no. I tell you. Wow. This has got to be a sign. Keep your hind parts in school, boy. <laughs> yeah. But I, yeah. But at the time. She asked me, you know, what are you doing home? I was like, well, Jim is the last class, so. And she looked at me with that, you know, the mother look and everything. She was like, she let me slide that for that la- that first and last time. She like, don't ever ca- let me catch you out of school like that again. I don't care if it's Jim or if it's twiddling your thumbs class. You make sure you go. I'm like, oh, okay, all right. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Thank, thank God you got away a little bit. <laughs> Cause Lord, no, Lord, yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> she had grace yeah. and mercy <laughs> on exactly. you that day. <laughs> and exactly, I mean, she really had. Well, Cause I, I mean, I, I wasn't a a child that really got into trouble when I was in school. I really didn't. I I got into trouble one time. I got suspended one time. And it was the craziest thing. I got suspended my 12th grade year. My graduating year, I got suspended. And it was over a fight. Oh, wow. Because, and, and you know how now um, kids, you know, we're, we're up at arms about kids bringing, you know, guns to school and things of that nature or whatever. I was in the middle of that one time. And that was in my 12th grade year. Um, this young man... It was a rumor that he had brought a gun to school for me, and me being an idiot, not thinking, and that's why, hey, kids, if you're listening, or parents, if you allow your child to listen, I hope you do. There's nothing, you know, vulgar on this show ever, but, um, you know, kids, if you're listening, I was an idiot, my mind wasn't thinking right. I was I was allowing the devil control my mind at the time because instead of going to a teacher or going to a principal or somebody and letting them know, I'm thinking I'm Mr. Bad, but – and I approached the boy. I'm like, oh, you brought a gun to school for me, and the boy got smart. We got oh, into wow. a fight and stuff, and the boy ended up – um. I, I remember this like it was yesterday. I haven't been in school in years. I graduated from high school in 91, so that can tell you how long this has been. Um, mm-hmm. And the young man picked up a desk, and he threw a desk at me. 
and the leg of the desk cut my eyebrow, and I still have the cut up underneath my eyebrow. If you move it back, you can still see it. Um, he cut my eyebrow or whatever. We, man, we got into it and everything, and um, I got suspended, I think, for like maybe three or four days, and they told my mom that it would have been worse if, you know, if it didn't, if they didn't find out that it was true, that the boy did bring a gun to school, stuff like that, or whatever, whatever, but, um, I was just like, that was the biggest, dumbest, stupidest move that I've ever made, so, as I said, I can look back at it now and say, that was very stupid of you, that was very dumb of you, so. Wow, that makes a good point in, on, on all scales, like, really, because the fact that the boy was going to bring a gun to school, that right there should not have been done. You know what I'm saying? Like so many things could have been alleviated. Yeah. You know, that's a perfect. That's a per. That's another show. That's a perfect show to do to talk <laughs> about how to deal. You know, yeah, because kids, kids these days they really don't know how to deal with things like that. They're getting bullied. You know, at yeah. school they're getting bullied on. Uh, social media, all kinds of things that they don't really know how to handle situations like that. I'll see back then we were taught, even though we made our own choices, but we were taught to talk to the person, you know, yeah. tell the teacher, like you said, tell the principal, tell somebody that's, that's an adult, you know, but now kids right. nowadays, they tell somebody and nobody does nothing about it, you know, so exactly. I think that's a, that's a, good show to talk about that topic right there to help our kids learn how to deal with those situations yeah yeah i mean it's just like uh this young lady named um jennifer i believe it's jennifer veeney i'm i'm sorry y'all i breathe things come up in my head and then the name is not clear but i know her last name is veeney and she's a part of uh uh amago Amago Records, uh, which um, Jarrell J. Rock Golden, he is the CEO and you know one of the artists on the uh, um, on the record label. It's a Christian label here in uh, Virginia. She has a song out called uh, "Bully Bullying" and everything. So I'm gonna try to get with them and uh, see if I can get a copy of that song, and then maybe get her on the show and uh, maybe get some other teachers because we all know a lot of teachers and everything that especially one of our um you know one of our good friends and another artist um uh Eris, you know uh she's a teacher and then um rl yeah. music he's a teacher so we know a lot of artists that are teachers maybe we'll do a segment um not a segment we'll do a show uh one day on you know on bullying on and how teachers handle different things nowadays things of that nature because uh that is something that ne- that always needs to be addressed especially during the summertime as the summertime not Mm -hmm. only do the kids need to realize you know to read a book and stay brushed up on their math and stuff like that but they need to still get that education about how to handle themselves if they feel like they're being bullied or downed or anything like that that makes them uncomfortable about going to school so you know that's something that shouldn't happen Right. Yeah. Cause, exactly. You know, because even as adults, we feel like we're sometimes we feel like we're being bullied. But as an adult, what do you do? You're an adult. Who do you go to? I mean, because I know on certain occasions that I've felt, you know, bullied. And I'm, you know, this is no joke. You know, I'm, I'm being serious. Um, you know, on occasions because. At some points, I needed, I still need some uh, dental work done, and um, and see, this is transparency all over again. I, but anyway, anyway, whatever. Um, <laughs> um, I need some dental work done, <laughs> which I still need some dental work done, and um, you know, sometimes when you need some dental work done or whatever, your breath isn't so desirable, even how much you brush it and stuff like that or whatever, and um. I was basically really bullied and ridiculed and stuff because of that. I try to keep gum with me. I try to, you know, stay away from people in their face as much as possible because I know what's going on or whatever, but still it did not stop 
you know, a couple of individuals who I worked with, who I was in a training class with and stuff to talk about me and basically just make me feel like nothing and everything. And um, one day it got so bad, it did, it it brought me in. I'm about to tear up now. It, it brought me into tears. I was really that upset. And that's what I'm saying. Even as an adult, what do you do? You know, you can't just run around punching people, beating up folks. So, you know, it, it's it's a horrible thing when a child grows up to still be a bully. You know, we it right. needs to be cut. It needs to be cut off. It really does. So, right. And you know, I, I thank God for you being transparent because that's what we do the show for is being transparent because these are real life issues. You know, a lot of people don't have. Um, you know, money to go out there, <clears throat> excuse me, to go out there and get dental work done, or it might be something going on with your your hormones or body, and you know things can happen. But people really need to t- be taught, and we and we touched on this word compassion. People really need to learn how to be compassionate these days, because really being a bully. Is you being selfish, and 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 you want the limelight to be on you, and you know you basically want to be the the life of the party, and mm-hmm. but at whose expense? You're doing it at other people's expense, and 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 I always tell our children is it's okay to joke, meaning laugh, tell a joke to laugh, but it's not okay to use a person as your joke. Mm-hmm. It's not okay to joke at another person's expense. Meaning, I want to hurt their feelings so I could get a laugh or get somebody to laugh. That's not funny. It's no longer a joke. So you yeah. know, um, you know, this bullying thing. Even about being an adult, you know, sometimes I just feel like the adult. Some adults like they didn't even grow up because my thing is this: <laughs> you have to sit there and make fun of someone, and you have no idea. What they're going through, you have no idea what they're facing. Yeah, you didn't. You don't have no idea. You don't even know who they are, but you're saying something about them. That's not showing no type of compassion, and you're not an adult. And I'm just gonna say it right now: you a child in an adult hmm. body, and you need to grow up. Yep. It's time to grow up. Stop yep. acting crazy, because that, yep. that don't make sense. Okay, if somebody, if somebody is 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 uh, you know, they they look bummy or something. Pull them aside and say, "Hey, here's a couple of dollars. Um, you know, how, how's life going? Um, you know, like one time my pastor, he takes people, he take them to the store and get them clothes. <laughs> He's down. Yeah. He has a conversation. Amen. He buy them food. You know, what's yeah. what's the harm in that? But yet we want to turn around and laugh and point finger. Look at them. They look bummy. Oh, look at them. They out on the street. Oh, look at them. Look at their car. Like one time I had a child in my own family. I won't put him out, out there on blast. But he said something <laughs> about my car because my car wasn't updated like his parents' car. I said, well, at least I got a car. Well, you walking. You walking. You, you riding in your parents' car. <laughs> I had to remind him. That car that you riding in ain't your car. It's your parents' car. So guess what? You walking in your two feet. You ain't even got a bike. If you want to say something about my car, at least I got a car. At least, at least the title is in my name. Amen. So we got. Amen. We got put people <laughs> in place. You know what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. But that's what I'm saying. Sometimes it gets hard out here, even for <clears throat> not only for children, but you know, for adults as well. So we. That's why compassion is the key. That's why loving thy neighbor, you never know what that other person or what that next door neighbor or what that person is going through. You you never know. We're so we're so ready to bash and ridicule and and put down, but when are we gonna be ready to step forward and say, you know what, I don't know what's going on. I really don't need to know what's going on, but I'm here to tell you that you have a friend in me, you know, if you ever want to talk or if you just want me to, just want me to listen, you have a friend in me. And that's, you know, and sometimes that's all, excuse me. Sometimes that's all the person wants to hear. 
you know? They just want to hear that somebody out there cares. You know, child, you know, a grown-up, woman, man, doesn't matter. Sometimes they just want to hear that, oh, somebody actually, you know, is willing to listen and somebody cares. That's about it. So, but, um, mm-hmm. yes, ladies and gentlemen, I just wanted to, hey, sometimes, like I said, sometimes we just pop off the top of the head and, hey, thought-provoking, not the top of the head, but God definitely put that on my heart to share it. So, uh, well, we're going to move it along. We have our guest, uh, Tony Dyson, this morning coming on the show. And matter of fact, I believe my brother is on the show right now. He just called me. Oh, wow. So, uh, <laughs> what we're going to do, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and... um. We're going to play one song, and then we're going to get right into this interview with my brother Tony Dyson off of uh, Kingdom Talk Radio. So uh, y'all are listening to Post the Northern Neck Radio Show. Be right, 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 right back. Shall receive 
right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. We are back. This is Post of Northern Neck Radio Show. I'm your host, Orlando. We are sitting here with uh, DeAndre. Man, I just got to say that uh, whew, that song really hit me that time. Man, Mm-mm-mm. sitting over here crying like a newborn baby. But uh, <laughs> all right, let's uh, keep the ball rolling, ladies and gentlemen. Without further ado, let me introduce you to my brother, Tony Dyson. How you feeling this morning, brother? I'm blessed, brother. How are you doing today? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. Just uh, letting God take over, just uh, running with it. I um, want you to uh, meet uh, DeAndre, DeAndre, Tony, Tony, DeAndre. Hello, Tony. How are you? I'm blessed. How are you doing this morning? I'm blessed. I'm good this morning. Good to have you on the show. Good to be here. Good to be here, most definitely. I've been... Uh, Orlando has been a very big support to Kingdom Talk Radio, and, you know, I try to reciprocate. seems like he has a little more time on his hands than I do, but nonetheless, we know that the, uh, <laughs> the, support, and the support is mutual. Yes, yes. yes. I totally agree. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, most definitely, most definitely. Um, hey, Tony, for those that may not know you or may have never heard of you before, why don't you introduce yourself and let folks know, um, you know, just briefly, how did you get into uh, hosting your own radio show? All right, well, a little bit about me. I'm, I'm 39, um, youth pastor at my church. I've been in ministry a little over 10 years. I've been married a little over 10 years, four kids. Um, I started off doing a series on YouTube, and they, they're still on there to this day called Time Out with Tony Tyson. Um, when I entered into the ministry, man, I mean, uh, I, I love church, so people don't get me wrong. I love assembling with the saints and the fellowship and, and, and be, get fed with knowledge and understanding. But what I was really looking at, man, is that uh, if we're truly following the mode of Jesus, okay, uh, Jesus, when he went into the synagogue, when he entered the city, it was nearly for formality. And when he went into the synagogue, he went in, he talked, and he's like, okay, y'all got this. I'm getting out here to the people. So as I was going to church and Notice that, you know, I go to church on Sunday, and then Bible study on Wednesday, then if we had to go to another church or two on Sunday evening, I'm like, wait a minute, man. I'm, I'm not saying anything <laughs> is wrong with that, but what I'm saying is is that I believe that we can be a little more productive with our time. So I started time out with Tony Dyson. I would sit down every uh, once a week, do like a 10 to 15 minute uh, teaching that kind of groove and somebody suggesting, like, hey, Tony, you know, you should be doing radio. I'm like, yeah, no, man, I ain't got time for that, you know? And <laughs> people around me did the legwork for me. Uh, they, they they found Blog Talk Radio. They introduced it to me. I mean, I started Kingdom Talk Radio over four years ago. I was actually on syndicated radio here in St. Louis for a little bit, but that, that price was like four times the amount of Blog Talk weekly. Okay, mm. so I'm, I'm like, all right, God, I got to be a better steward. So, but I, I continue to go with Kingdom Talk Radio. We've uh, reached countless people. I mean, I get inboxes still today from Rwanda, from Canada. I mean, brothers like yourself, man, that that play the show on the East Coast. Brothers like Jim the Disciple Connor at ChristLikeRadioRemix dot com. Uh, they play the show, you know, on Monday. No, you play on Mondays. He plays on Thursdays. I'm sorry. Yeah. And, it's just been a fellowship, and my goal at the end of the day is to have a network and a platform to where we're funding one another. Well, God's people are funding one another, so therefore we can be all kingdom, all Jesus, or all nothing. Hmm. Amen. Amen. Now, um, let let the folks in a little bit about your uh, testimony a little bit, because uh, your testimony, man, is definitely uh, a powerful one. Uh, I've listened to you speak on it, you know, many times on your show and just, you know, in general. So uh, definitely let them, let them into your world a little bit. Well, uh, as I said, I'm, I'm, I'm 39, uh, and I'll just run right through it, man. Uh, I At the age of three months, uh, oh, uh, my mother actually gave me up for adoption, and it was kind of like a forceful adoption. She told my great aunt, uh, whom I call Grandma, which would be 100 on the 29th of this month when you're ready to celebrate that, but uh, 
Mm. Wow. Yeah, seriously, she still stays by herself and everything. Um, Amen. She pretty much told her, either you take him or I'm going to kill him. So mm. she took custody, she took custody of me. Her and her daughter raised me. I grew up without my father. I met my father probably about I was maybe 24 uh, when I met my father. But uh, at a young age, man, I mean, I've always had a I had a decent heart, a uh, good heart. My actions never followed. Uh, I was seven years old uh, in uh, elementary school. And I was actually, you all may hear a little racket. I'm actually getting back into my house now. So I my son off the camp. I was seven years old, and I was sliding down the banisters at school on the second floor, and I fell over. So I fell from the second floor of the school onto the concrete basement. And it, it knocked me out. Uh, I woke up to the principal carrying me to the nurse's office. Uh, hold on, let me. We just going, I'm sorry, y'all. Mm-hmm. There we go. Mm-hmm. And um, mm-hmm. I, I, I literally walked away. And when my aunt took me to the hospital, they refused to believe I had just failed two stories, you know, and landed on a concrete floor. And, I, and you know, as I look back and I recap on these things from my life now, I see how the enemy tried to take me out at an early age. I uh, grew up mm-hmm. um, running with the Gates of Disciples. In my neighborhood, actually, I got the big tattoo on my arm now, but it's used as a witness and testimony. Um, I had drugs and whatnot. I went off to the military. Uh, got into the military at 18, you know, over in Korea. Uh, started drinking heavily and just trying to drown some of the sorrows that I was going through, you know, the the mishaps with my mom's because she she actually, when I actually found out who she really was at the age of 12. Uh, that went south. We didn't have a relationship. Like I said, I still didn't have a father. I had a few men in my life, but I didn't have a father. Uh, I came, mm. as I went in the military, I came back to uh, Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Uh, I tried to commit suicide. I took a bottle of Motrin, went to bed, uh, got up the next one and still. Continued on with that. Finally moved back to St. Louis in about 90, 98, 99-ish. Um, really went into smoking weed, popping pills, drinking every day. I mean, I was a functioning alcoholic probably at the age of 25. And mm. um, my work ethic, I would work. I mean, it was crazy because people didn't know. I mean, I would go to work, but if I had a choice between eating and drinking or getting high, guess what? I was drinking and getting high. Um, mm. married, man, um uh, that marriage went kind of south because my aunt, who helped my grandma raise me, passed. Uh, there was some emotional imbalance there with me. I tried to commit suicide again. Um, as I'm laying in the hospital bed, I mean, God spoke, and he said, hey, until you do what I need you to do, I'm going to keep let, allowing you to go through the cycle, and I'm not going to let you die. I ran for another few years, man. That marriage dissolved. Um, me, myself and my current wife, we got together. Uh, I got back. I started, started going back to church when I started hearing the kingdom, man, not just the death, burial, and resurrection. When I started hearing empowerment in the kingdom with my pastor, who's my now pastor, still Bishop Anthony Taylor, who's releasing his first book on this Friday, Shameless Plug, I know. And um, <laughs> I, just, I just began to follow him. And through my life of following him, I've seen changes in my life. I've been married for over 10 years now. Uh, no more depression, no more suicide attempts. Uh, I was able to put down the, the, the weed, the pills, the alcohol, I mean, and have a mind geared towards the kingdom. And don't get me wrong, people. I mean, I'm telling you the short version. There are many drug-filled nights where I didn't know how I got home the next day. There are many times that I stole, I did harm to myself. You know, I was a cutter. I mean, so there are many things that still went in between there. At the end of the day, and I tell people this all the time, I can't speak for your relationship with God or your relationship with Christ. However, this is what he's done for me. And as mm. I open my heart and open my mind and I change my mindset, my actions change, which changed my environment, which is steady me even to this day, is changing my life. Amen. Wow. Amen. Powerful testimony. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. Well, I'm going to let like, you uh, take over. what do you say behind it. that? My God. <laughs> my God. I mean, I'm trying to collect myself. <laughs> I mean, and, 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 that's all, and that's all you can say, and that's why when I'm 
about my father's business. I know I'm on borrowed time, and I, I, sh- I should be going three times over. I mean, and, and, and as my, and as uh, I believe all the night you listen to my testimony, so when I finally, after about three years of being on Kingdom Talk Radio, went on and just let the cat out the bag, you know, I've been visited by the devil twice. I mean, seriously, people. When I say I've been visited by that, by that entity, he was there in front of me, paralyzed me. I couldn't move. I've been, I, I was taken to hell. I promise you, you are. At the age of 12, I was laying in my bed in my grandmother's house. I woke up in hell. I'm running through the house in hell. I ran all the way down to the basement. I'm in hell. I mean, it was dark, stench. There was like blood running as rivers. I'm telling y'all, man, and I look back at all those signs at that point in time, and I understand now why the enemy was trying to show me all that, that he was trying to detour me. I mean, I was a womanizer. I mean, I couldn't go a day without being with somebody because I was lonely on the inside. And, and mm. I'm telling you, man, so, and once again, that's why I tell people, man, get, get, a, get a personal relationship with God. That personal relationship with, with God would do more wonders than any pastor would try to browbeat into you, seriously. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm. Now, one one question that I that I had, um, because I've heard another artist or another individual, another person say something about being uh, a cutter and things of that nature. I know what it is, but me myself, um, I'm really not a hundred percent sure on what goes through the mindset of a person that wants to cut themselves what is that doing is that you know of of uh act of releasing releasing pressure or you know what what does that do or is you just want to put inflict more pain on yourself it's it i think it's a three way type of uh situation because when you have so much on the inside of you and you don't have a proper uh source of relief, it's like cutting on one side of the fence, you're doing damage, so you're being destructive. But on the flip side of that, you're feeling pain as well, but mentally you're releasing pain because it's like the damage that you want to inflict to others, the damage, you know, that you want others to feel because of how you feel inside, you're really doing it to yourself. And it was just a, it was just a, I mean, seriously, I mean, uh, if I was like near you and I would show you my arms, I would show you the burns, the cuts, and all this stuff. And I'm left handed, so my right wrist, and, and all I know what I'm going to do is when, when we get off the phone, I'm going to take a picture of my right wrist and I'm going to uh, inbox it to you. My right mm. wrist is full of cuts, man. I mean, still to this day, because of. Uh, I would just sit there, take, 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 and, and I don't mean to bring this up like this on the show, but I'll take a hit of a blunt. Cut. I take a swig of the, of, the, of the alcohol. Cut. And it was like, so it was numbing me. You know what I'm saying? To what? I, to the actual physical pain, but the mental anguish was there. And it was like, you know, I mean, I, I was kind of a loner. But then when I got ready to smoke, it, when I needed other people around, because I really had a fear of being alone, because I still had that sense of abandonment from my moms and my father, man, at such a young age. And it was like, man, you know, i got to keep a crowd around me because if I don't, I don't know how to be by myself. Excuse me. Yeah. Wow. 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 And, and, and that's something that a lot of us we do is we fill our voids. We try to fill it with, you know, it could be food, like you said, alcohol, drugs, cutting ourselves, whatever, to try to fill that that void. So, so what do you tell those that you know grew up uh, without their mother or father being in their life? It took a slap in the face, man, from reality because when I got ready to enter the ministry. I called my biological moms. I called her. I said, look, I said, I know we have not had the best of times, the best of life, the best of relationship. I'm like, but my heart is geared to going towards ministry. And being where I am with you right now, I can't move forward into ministry with that burden and or that darkness in my heart. So I told her, I said, look, Let's let's bury the hatchet. Let's start here. I love you. And she said, I love you too. 
Uh, now, this is the lady that when I graduated from high school, instead of giving her the ticket, I tore it up and threw it up and made it confetti. I mean, that that's how that I hated her, and I am not being overzealous. I hated that lady. But um, as I moved forward, I told her I loved her. She she passed about eight months later. She died. Wow. And, and mm. I'm actually the oldest, the oldest of three boys. And me, me and my brothers, I've been with one brother. I've been with another brother. None of my, me and none of my brothers have ever been together, all, all three at once, ever. One's in Kansas City. One stays in Indiana, but he's locked up at the moment. But God has been using him since that point in time. That's another story. So I had to drive to Kansas City actually to put every last dime I had on her funeral. But there was a piece in it. And my wife would tell you, man, we were driving back down 70 back to St. Louis. And in front of the car, now my father, it's crazy because I met him at my aunt's wake. Okay, so my aunt who helped raise me when she died, I met my father at her wake. So me, so I'm his only son. Me and him have become really close over the last uh, 15 years or so. He let me use his car to drive up to Kansas City. And I'm driving back to St. Louis. A ray of sunshine followed us for about 20 miles down the highway. It was a cloudy day. And I told my wife, I said, you see that? She was like, yeah, I see it. I'm like, God said, all is well. And I said, I'm about her soul but my relationship with her, so I don't have anything to worry about, you know what I'm saying? But anywho, so what I tell people is this. I understand what you've gone through, the pain that you've been through, the hurt that people may have caused you, but at the end of the day, you're still standing. I did a song a few a few weeks ago. I'm still breathing. My heart's still beating, so I'm still believing. And at any point mm. in time, no matter what it is you're going through, I mean, even Joseph in the pit, Daniel in the lion's den, I know those are cliche stories, but there's a meaning behind that. If you still have function and capability in this realm, God is saying you're not done yet. And I understand sometimes people who haven't been through anything will sit there and try to encourage you and pat you on the back, but I'm telling you from a young man who's been there, God has placed you from amongst certain people to allow you to grow and thrive. He said, I have to remove you from this environment. Matter of fact, I have to mm-hmm. remove you from all that you know in order to make you who I need you to be. And yes, it hurts not knowing your mother. Yes, it hurts not having a family that supports you. Yes, it hurts when they may not have a, but a friend or two. But I'm telling you that if you continue to push on, know yourself, know your identity. Know what makes you tick, know what makes you click, know what makes you fall. And as you start to gather that, young people, and I'm telling you right now, if any young people are listening to this or catch the archive, email me, kingofthartradioshow.gmail.com. I'm there for you. Because the thing about men, men, we are so soft yet so tough. And the thing Mm -hmm. is about a man, whether it's young or old, we are scared we are petrified of letting another man know our inner, deepest, darkest secrets, whether we're struggling with porn, whether we're cheating on our wives, whether we have an addiction, because we feel like that once I divorce this to another man, that he's going to have power over me, and I'm going to look like a punk. And I, and I apologize for using that particular word, but that's really what it is. And that's why men fall and struggle yeah. so much, because we don't have a support system. So if you're a young man Amen. Find, find you a young, find you a, 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 a decent gentleman that's on a path to where you're trying to go. And young ladies, I'm going to say the same thing to you. You may think mothers in the church because they dress all concealed and whatnot, but baby, they have your best interest at mind. See, these dudes that talk sweet nothings in your ear because we all react mm-hmm. to one thing. And man, I'm sorry for blowing your cover, but it is what it is because I got daughters and I got a license. But anyway, so the thing is, <laughs> is, that, is, is that, you know, young, young women have no role models anymore because most mothers, and y'all, I'm just going to tell it like it is, most mothers are mm-hmm. chasing that next man to make their life yeah. better or, or they're working two jobs so they're never at home, which is leaving the young lady to stand for themselves. So these young ladies have no skills, they have no self-esteem, they have no self-awareness, they have no uh, protocol in their life. So now our young people are just a boiling pot of foolishness and mess. Hmm. And we've got to get to some type of point and have some type of standard in place 
to where this young people look up at us and say, you know what, I know you're a preacher, I know you're a man of God, a woman of God, but I need help. And that's what it's going to take. I wish I had someone back in my day when I was 15, 16. I'm 39. I have a 20-year-old, okay? Hmm. And I tell people all the time, I don't regret none of my kids, 20, 16-year-old, 12-year-old, or the 7-year-old, three girls, one boy. I don't regret none of them. But however, I regret child support. <laughs> and the thing is, is that they don't they don't understand. We always talking about the, the the spiritual system. There's a financial system spiritually as well that young men and young women get entangled in that affects you later on in life. And the thing is, is that if we don't start talking about sex, well, you can't talk about sex in the church while all these little saints running around in. Somebody having it. Hmm. Hmm. I, mean, I just want to be. I just want to be practical. So, in a nutshell, man, when you're dealing with these type of, of depressions, you have to look at your surroundings, man. I mean, I know that people been off, been worse off than I have been, maybe on the streets or whatnot. But you're still breathing. God hasn't judged you for your past. God has not doomed you. But the thing is, is that what do you want in your heart? And it's kind of like the uh, lepers outside of the. Yes. Yeah. Now, by you being a radio host. Um, just like, you know, that's one of your hats you wear, like Orlando and all, but um, how did God give you the vision for Kingdom Talk Radio? And and I also saw on your page something that just really blessed my spirit. Um, you have a T-shirt on there that says, Pastor, in it for the outcome, not for the income. So it's a two-part question. How did God give you the vision for Kingdom Talk Radio? And talk about being in it for the outcome and not the income. I look at it like this. First off, with with, uh, Kingdom Talk Radio, I haven't heard most most gospel shows, there's a self, all right, let me say this this disclaimer. And Orlando, you know I'm being with disclaimers. (laughs) So (laughs) let, let me say this. When I give this example, I'm not talking about anybody in particular. This is just how I see things. So if anybody gets offended, please don't get get unoffended, okay? Seriously. But <laughs> most radio shows, they have a self-proclaimed apostle, self-proclaimed evangelist, or whatever the case may be, prophet, prophetess, deacon, deaconess, self-proclaimed that talks real uppity and deep. You know what I'm saying? And the program mm-hmm. is real mm-hmm. preachy and churchy to where someone calls in with a common, normal question just because, I mean, it just, just may be the fact that they don't know the answer to, preach to. And it's like we, we I had to start some type of platform that has an even playing field to where regardless of what my topic is, if I open up the phone lines and you have a question, that's what we're here for. I'm here to be an enlightenment. So that means that I'm not mm. going to preach at you. I'm actually here to try to enlighten and show you. And prayerfully, over the four years of Kingdom Talk Radio, I've really opened up my own life. My wife listens in every Tuesday night. She's my biggest critic and my best supporter. If I'm doing too much, she's going to tell me, you running out, honey. You're doing too much. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and... So, therefore, over the four years, I've had to stay transparent. So, therefore, what I put out, whether I'm behind the mic of Kingdom Talk Radio, I'm behind the mic in church, I'm witnessing to others, or I'm involved in ministry events, i got to keep it real. Because if I don't keep it real, I'm going to hear about it when I come back. I'm like, honey, you know, good is all going well. You don't do that. Why are you lying to them people? I ain't trying to hear that, y'all. Amen. I'm, I'm, I ain't trying to hear that when I get home. I'm trying to snuggle up next to not have two different comforters on the bed and married people, y'all know what I'm talking about. Two different comforters. <laughs> so I feel like that having a platform like that allows people to call in and ask those questions that they may be afraid to ask in church. Because some people feel like, well, I've been in church for four years and I should know this, but, and not to talk about anybody's church, but if you're not involved and with the person, a man of God or a woman of God that's feeding you with knowledge and understanding, you're going to miss some basics if they're all about money and auxiliaries and about 
you know, programs. You're going to be missing some, some, some nutrients. And now on the flip side of that, the other question was um, the, the income, not the outcome. And I'll tell you like this. Income, if you look at money, it's called currency. That means that income would never stay with you. It's called currency. It's like an electrical current. It flows from one place to another. That means I may have a lot of income coming in today, and then I may buy a car tomorrow. That means I got a lot of income going out tomorrow, so it's not going to stay with me. However, the outcome is investing in people and not in things. So when you start to invest in people and you start to see their lives change and you start to see God using people right before your eyes, at the day, see, I'm selfish with my walk. I, I believe hmm. that when I, when I transition from this realm to the next one, I want God to be looking at his watch like, God, he left that 30 seconds and go, where he at? Then the clouds go apart, and I'm walking through, and he's going to be like, there, there he is. That's my boy. You know, so hmm. the outcome is showing people that you can transform your lifestyle. You can transform your living. You can transform everything about you, but it starts with your mind. And too many times when people come to church hurt, young girls have been touched and have been molested. Young boys have been beat on, you know what I'm saying? And and don't get me wrong, yes, the gospel and Jesus is essential. It is, it is the uh, uh, pillar and foundation of our belief and, and of the kingdom. But however, if you have a young woman or a young man that doesn't know anything about love, when they walk into the church and the first thing you throw at them for God so loved the world, well, wait a minute. You got to stop right there preaching. I don't have love in my house. <laughs> I don't have love at school. I don't have love in these streets. So you need to tell me the people that I see don't show me love. And you're trying to tell me that some do, and I'm being facetious. Christ, you know you're not a dude to me. But I'm just being, I'm just saying how the young people are saying. <laughs> you need to tell me that some dude died on the cross that don't even know me because he loves me. Hey, you smoke it. And the, thing, and the thing is, you have to show them their identity. When you show somebody mm. that they're made in God's image and his likeness, that they have power and dominion, then they start to feel better about themselves. That means the dresses will get longer, the pants will get higher, belts will come on, because now they have some type of self-respect instead of us beating Jesus into them. And then when they realize who they are, they have an identity. See, that, that's why so much is going on right now. When you don't have an identity, you're like a chameleon. You'll change color based on yes. what's around you. Yes, yes. Yep. And that's why our young people, men with men, women with women, everybody with everybody, they, they don't know who they are. So even though, yes, Christ is the foundation, but when you can show somebody who they are, show them their identity, this is who you are. Now allow me to show you who we established that. Now, all of a sudden, that person is going from loving themselves because if you don't love yourself, you can't show no love to nobody else. Amen. Once, you got them loving, once you got them loving themselves, then you can move on down the road. So the outcome is more important than any type of income, man, that you can ever receive because you can't put a dollar amount on salvation. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes, amen, most, most definitely, man. But once again, just want to let y'all know, this is Post of Northern Neck Radio Show. We're sitting down with uh, host Tony Dyson of the Kingdom Talk Radio Show. Hey, uh, Tony, let folks know when they can uh, tune in and listen to you once again. Uh, I air Tuesday nights at uh, 7 p.m. Uh, uh, Central Standard Time. Um you can, you can Google. If you Google Kingdom Talk Radio, you can catch the archives. It's over 180 episodes, um, and I'm looking to expand as well. So uh, be on the lookout. Uh, my email address is Kingdom Talk Radio Show at gmail dot com. Uh, and I noticed myself in Orlando, we kind of mirror some of the same artists, and it's like right about the same time, or within a week or two of one another. It's like, wait, I just played him now. Orlando playing though, and I know Orlando has noticed. I just played him now. I'm playing though because. We try to let people know, man, you got support out here if you're not mainstream. So Tuesday night, 7 p.m. is where you can catch me. Yes, yes, most definitely, man. One, hey, all of us trying to combine and uh, work together on this, most definitely, man. Uh, it's been a pleasure and an honor, man, definitely having you on the show, yeah. brother. Um, it's been a long time coming. 
I think I've been. Go ahead. I said, well, man, it, it, it's a pleasure, man. Nonetheless, I know that you are always with me uh, in spirit, man. I know you always go back to archive. And I, I just thank God, man, just for God being able to um, reveal the vision to more than one individual. I am actually in the process of starting a outreach group with different pastors in the area called From the Pew to You, to where we're going to dedicate once every three months closing our churches down and taking that support to the community in which we're in. Because the four walls is thriving, but the community around it is dying. And it's like, man, you know, we got we got to start helping the people, letting them see the doors of the church are open, but when we have a service, they're closed. Hmm. So, it's time for, so it's time for us to take it to the street, man. Uh, let the community know we're here for you, you know, whatever the case may be. And one last word, man, to the people that's out there. I challenge you this. If the Lord saves Jesus Christ is not your personal sin, you don't know him, I challenge you right now at this point in time to a 30-60-90 challenge. 30-60-90, people saying, well, what is that? Okay, anything you do for 30 days or more becomes a habit. Anything you do, I'm sorry, from zero to 30 days is a habit. From 31 days to 60 days is an addiction. From 61 days on is a lifestyle. That's why most jobs, you start off on 30 days, 60 days, depending on the job, or 90 days probation. They're trying to see. I dare you for the next 30 days every day to start praying, asking God show you your way. And now after that first 30 days, you're going to be addicted to praying. That means you can't start your day. It's like an actual addict to where I can't get up without a cigarette, get up without a drink. But now your addiction is I can't get up without prayer. And then prayer is going to become hmm. your lifestyle. I, I guarantee you. And then if it don't work for you, stop and go back to what you was doing and see which one has the most fulfillment. Amen. 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 Now, you know I got to jump on this uh, St. Louis thing because you know majority of my family is from St. Louis. Okay. So, uh, yeah, definitely, definitely. My mom's out there, my dad, grandmother, and folks of that nature, they out there. Are you, you're always, uh, you were born and raised in St. Louis or you yes, moved there at a I... different time? <laughs> No, I, I was born and raised in St. Louis, uh, uh, like off of Delmar and Hamilton. Uh, I'm, now, I'm now staying in Belfort with neighbors. I worked in Florissant. I mean, so I'm I'm all around the city, man. I mean, I know people from. I stayed on the South Side for a number of years, so I'm I'm pretty well versed in the city, man. And you would be surprised okay. if you start really connecting, maybe mess around and know some people that know each other that know us. Yeah, yeah, because I was surprised because a couple of artists from there and everything, I was sitting back thinking, I was like, man, it's just surprising how you live somewhere, you know, for so long, but yet you don't never cross paths with certain folks until later on in life. So, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, because uh, I used to be involved with a lot of um, uh, conscious uh, hip-hop groups and stuff that, you know, do you remember up there at um, uh, the, 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 the Red Sea? Yeah, right there in the loop. Yeah. Yeah, used to do a lot of shows down there at the Red Sea and stuff. Um, used to be involved with a group named uh, The Soul and Me. You remember them? I got that. I don't uh, remember them. Or The Soul Survivors. This was years ago, years ago, years ago. You probably know um, uh, 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 Carlos Thames, but they call him Red. I believe I do. Yes. I believe I do. Yeah, because he. Cause he he used to Dude, I was go ahead. up in the loop like at the Foot Locker and stuff that was right there. Okay, yeah, yeah. Well, he always loved shoes and stuff. He <laughs> always playing sports. Play, I believe he played uh, softball professionally for a while and stuff and everything. So uh, he was a rapper and everything. And um, Arthur Robinson. I don't know the name of him. Yeah, there's a lot of folks around there that, uh, that's what I said, a lot of people around there that used to hang out with, used to be around and everything. I know Arthur doesn't live live um, there anymore. I believe he lives in uh, Florida now. But, um, yeah, man, I got to get back up there definitely and uh, check out the spots and stuff and see what's up. I didn't stick around long. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, I want to say this, Orlando, so, man. Um, 
for, for the seeds that you're sowing, um, I know that God has a harvest prepared for you. And I'm, I'm, and I'm not going to be cliche. I know everybody wants to start trying to speak blessings and whatnot, but Orlando, what God has for you is bigger than, than Pulse or the Next. God okay. always operates off of faith and uh, continuality. That means that uh, and faithfulness, faith and faithfulness. That means you have the faith in him that whatever he's placed before you, that you have the faithfulness that no matter what it looks like, storm, rain, sunshine, snow, hail, storm, earthquake, tsunami, that you're going to push forward. It's just the beginning for you, bro. Seriously, because I know your desire at the mm. end of the day, without knowing, but your desire is kind of like mine, to develop a community and to develop a radio station that's worldwide, nationwide, to where it pleases God. Amen. You're so you're, you're sowing seeds, but I do want to tell you this, brother. As you continue to sow, sometimes you have to put a certain amount of seeds on this side, and then you got to put more of those seeds on the other side. Because everybody's not cultivating the seeds that you're dropping for them. And I'm, I'm going to leave it at that. Mm. Praise Amen. God. That is for sure not true. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, once and again, brother, we'll go ahead. I'm sorry. And it's hard to do. I'm, I'm going to quit, man. But it's hard to do when you have a heart <laughs> for the people you want to sow seeds. But like I say, man, you know, yeah. God is saying, hey, I, I'm directing you. And a lot of times we sow seeds on our own without inkling of him. So your harvest will, will start to come to pass. But I'm telling you, there are, some, there are some seeds that you're sowing right now that the people are just, they're not even cultivating. You sowed the seeds. As soon as you went on to move on, they moved on too. So somebody's going to come behind you and reap that unless you go back. Hmm. Hmm. Amen. 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 All right. All right. Well, brother, you got us over here. Thank you. Got us over here. <laughs> that's, that's what it's all about, though. Most definitely, man. Most definitely. Man, like I say, that's why I say it's an honor having you on here, man. Definitely, brother. I, like I told uh, Mike Myers, I do not want it to be the last time that you uh, come on the show. So we got to make this a... Uh, no, you know, make this not a regular thing, but definitely a regular thing. So, most definitely, I, thank you very much, man. My pleasure, man. God bless you both. May you all be safe, and whatever you set your hand for to, may God continue to prosper you and your health in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You too, brother. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, once again, this is Post of the Northern Neck Radio Show. We're sitting down. We were sitting down with our brother, uh, Tony Dyson, of the Kingdom Talk Radio Show. And what we're going to do is we're going to pull away real quick for a couple of songs. This uh, brother here is by the name of Jay Kingdom, and the first song up is uh, Complete Deliverance. We'll be right back.
can look at me and tell I want the change I'll never be the same So take the pain away You can look at me and tell I want the change I'll never be the same
ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. That was J Kingdom. Uh, the last song there was Wanna Be Close. That's his uh, single that he has out right now. So make sure y'all check him out. Have his information on uh, Facebook. And I will be posting his bio and information on Pulse of the Northern Neck Radio Show later on this afternoon. So definitely check him out. And that was... Um, Straight from uh, Agora, so shout out to Agora once again for all the love and uh, support that they've been showing to us, you know, providing us with the the praise and worship music and uh, things of that nature. So I'm definitely honored uh, and and blessed by what they've been doing for our show and what they've been doing for our network. So thank you very much. Yeah. And also, if y'all, mm-hmm. yes, and if y'all don't want to miss it. The Agora um, Awards show, I believe, is tomorrow, between today and tomorrow, in uh, Miami, Florida. And a lot of people are on their way out there. A lot of the artists are on their way out there right now. And you do not have to miss it. All you have to do is download the free app. Go to uh, Google Play Store, and I believe it's on iTunes as well. But uh, go there, download the Agora free app. I believe um, you just put in a g a r a and um the free app should pop up if not i'll get you the information and then you can actually watch the award show from the app so hey support 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 as much as possible and if you are artists i've been posting um different information things of that nature about um the organization so make sure y'all have a chance to check that out and uh, see what they have to offer man you never know i understand a lot of people want to be independent they want to do things you know themselves but there's nothing wrong with having a little bit of help out there so especially with this um you know, with this music thing and trying to spread the gospel and trying to reach as many avenues as possible. So if there's somebody out there willing to help, let's uh, step up and, you know, see what they have to offer. And then, hey, it doesn't cost to just see. It doesn't cost yeah, to Yeah, I was just about to say that. <laughs> I was just about to say that. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, I do want to announce this Saturday we do have a, a gospel fest that's going on here in the Northern Neck in Kilmarnock, Virginia. If anybody is here in town, make sure y'all check it out. It's the second annual gospel fest Saturday, July 16th, um, 2016, 3 p.m., free will offering, uh, no child shall go without and uh, they have a lot of great uh, artists, a lot of great, um, you know, performers. They have, uh, let me see, the Warriors for Christ, Lee Walker and Spirits, Brothers in Unity, and Faithful Connection. So definitely check that out. And that will be at Kilmarnock Baptist Church. That's uh, 65 East Church Street, Kilmarnock, Virginia, 22482. And if you need any information or if you want to find out anything more about what's going on with the gospel fest you can contact information uh mrs clark at five excuse me five four zero two two nine twenty five ninety or mrs owens at eight zero four 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 one four seven eight four I will um, have that information up on the Post of the Northern Neck radio show page as well, which um, I've already shared their uh, page. So make sure y'all check that out. If you're free, go out there and support. Go out there and um, check out and see what's going on, man. Get get some blessings. Um, hey, God's going to be flowing through uh flowing through the building that night so that afternoon if you want to call it afternoonish into the night so definitely go out there and enjoy yourself hey if somebody was saying that they were going to be throwing a free party and drinks for everybody i bet you a lot of y'all will be out there so let's get on out there y'all let's get on out there and support <laughs> let's do something hey i'm just gonna put it out there you know how we do here on yeah. post and northern neck radio show don't hold no punches yeah. <laughs> Right, feel like, right. feel like Bernie <laughs> back over here. Who <laughs> no punching, punching <laughs> the throat. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but nah, man, I just like to have fun, y'all. So, hey, don't take me too serious, but take me serious when you're supposed to. But nah, we had a good time, man. <laughs> Sat down with Tony. 
<laughs> had a good time with Tony Dyson. Definitely that brother, man. I love him to life most definitely. Not just because he's listening. I still love him, even if he wasn't listening. But <laughs> but definitely, I gotta go to um, I gotta go to a wrestling match with him, man, because he he's a big uh, wrestling supporter. I stopped watching wrestling a long time ago, but uh, definitely wouldn't mind going to a wrestling match with a real wrestling supporter like himself and uh, um, Jay Kells, our brother Jay Kells, the host of the Grind Show. He loves wrestling as well, man. I I I, I just have a oh, feeling wow. that if you go. To a wrestling match with somebody that really likes it, you probably have even more fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because you know, you'll feel that. Yeah, you know that energy from them. So I was like, wow, I gotta hey try to set that up, meet up in St. Louis or something. Have J. Kells come from? Well, no, nah, maybe we'll meet up in Louisiana. Yeah, go yeah. down to the Bayou. Yeah. <laughs> plan plan so, that trip yeah. out. Need a vacation. You need a vacation. All that work you be doing, yeah, you need you need a vacation. Man. <laughs> see, see, that's the thing though. My vacation time doesn't kick in till around August, September, and then we have a new hire that we just brought on. So until the new hire really gets acclimated and and you know it knows exactly what to do without anybody there, then I can skirt out. <laughs> okay. Well, we're gonna be praying to catch on yes. real quick. Yes. And, uh, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm so excited. That vacation. I'm excited. <laughs> I haven't had a chance to take a vacation and a real vacation in like, man, I think it's been like five, six years, if not longer. So That's I'm excited. A long I'm excited. Time. Yes. Yeah, you need yeah. a vacation. Yes, yeah, I'm praying for that. <laughs> <laughs> Me as as well as myself. Oh, 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 oh! My brother Tony hit me up and said uh, he's a big Eagles fan as well. So I don't know about that one, Tony. I'm not an Eagles fan, but uh, it's all good though. You know, I still <laughs> love you. <laughs> I still love you. It's most definitely. But um, yeah, man, I I gotta get that vacation in. But hey, it'll come in in due time and God's time. It will definitely come. Maybe my first vacation will be the um. I wanted to go to uh, it's a gospel festival that's out in uh, I believe it's out in Miami it's out in Florida I missed it last year but I want to try to make it out there this year take a couple of artists out there and stuff and uh, go out there and check it out like Lecrae and uh, Trip Lee and a lot of the big names are usually out there at this uh, gospel festival so I may have to uh, check that out this year so it was on my to-do list. So I believe it's like in October, sometime around in October and everything. So mm-hmm. yeah, that would be awesome. So hopefully by then you'll be able to, you know, get that vacay in. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm praying for. At least get a vacation sometime in this year. You know, everybody mm-hmm. needs a break. That's for sure. I'm, I'm learning that the hard way. Everybody, you know, even though we like to work hard, you know, even Jesus himself rested. <laughs> Look, even God rested. So, <laughs> exactly. you know, not not because he was tired, but because he knew that all the things that he had did, he wanted to, you know, sit down, relax, and enjoy it. You know, and I think uh, life is to be enjoyed. Um, and I'm, I'm learning that the hard way. So those of you that, you know, um, I don't want to get into my last words, but <laughs> of the day, <laughs> uh, <laughs> slightly get into it. The Lord is slightly pushing me there, but um, you know, life is to be enjoyed. Um, we have we have one life, and you know, it's it's for us to enjoy it. And uh, I I like Joyce Meyer's uh, theme for her shows, uh, enjoying every day. And and you know, if you can if you can find the beauty in something throughout your day. Guess what? You can't enjoy it. You can't enjoy life. So I think, I think need that vacation. Need that vacation. So yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's why I try to keep a smile on my face as often as possible. But, you know, hey, we'll we'll get it done. But what I want to do is I want everybody to turn up with me. How about that? How about that? Y'all want to turn up? We're going to turn up real quick, and we'll be right back. Turn up. Turn up. All right. Let's, let's get it. Yeah. Mike Jesus. Yeah, that's right. It's saying the book of songs. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. That's right. So you know what? Yeah, let's go. We're gonna make a little bit right now. And turn it up on high. Bumming holy tracks in the back of the Cadillac while we snapping so dramatic. And turn it up on high. Go and stop shaking the black. It ain't no stopping. We rockin', keeping it poppin'. Turn it up on high. That's what they be hearing when I'm coming to the block. It be like a bumming G-O-D. And it ain't gonna stop cause we on that shit. It, it, it can work. Take it to the head for the Lord. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I really feel it in my nerves, making it hard for me not to serve. As I'm in the parking lot, bumping to the base beneath your feet. I'ma keep on rapping to God is all up in Danny Street. I should've told you, but if I said it once, I'd say it again. All the way you're gonna make it with God is you gotta play to win. So when you in a suburban with Donna McClurkin, just turn it up. Kirk Franklin bagging while you're doing your thing, man, just lift them up. Turn it up on high, when the Holy Spirit till you feel good inside. Feel good from your head to your feet Ain't no point in trying to please me Do what you gotta do for the main to your knees So you can see why I lift my hands high I ain't got to lie to the boys right here Cause if you can't get close to this I'm really trying to get up in your ear Yes. 
Well, I've had a good time today. Like I said, we had a uh, guest, Tony Dyson, on from Kingdom Talk Radio. Make sure y'all tune in every Tuesday around uh, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Yeah. I believe that's Central. Yeah, Central Standard Time, because uh, he's located in St. Louis. For those of y'all that know the time zones and everything, this man, this radio stuff made me learn way more than just, you know, doing the radio, time zones and everything else. But, hey, it's all good. But uh, most definitely mm-hmm. tune in to him. Look him up on Facebook. He'll be more than happy to uh, sit down and talk to you. Anybody out there that has any concerns about, you know, Hey, anything, man, definitely. He's an open book. He's a brother that will definitely help you out and uh, give you his heart, man. So uh, don't be scared to reach out and speak with him. And for everybody that's listening and for everybody that's going to listen to the archives, we just thank you very much once again because uh, you, you can be listening to anybody else, and we know that. And we don't take it lightly that you choose to, you know, give us a little bit, just a little bit of your time, you know, out of a day. So definitely thank you, thank you, thank you, and God bless you. And may God um just have you and hold you close to his bosom and and um bless you with everything not with everything but bless you with the things that he sees fit to bless you with so i know we want everything under the sun but hey everything under the sun is not good for you so definitely definitely we're gonna wind this down a little bit this morning so uh get ourselves ready for the show tomorrow um hopefully man i have a couple of fillers out there so uh hopefully they come through if not hey we know what to do we know we know how to put on a great show for you so we're not gonna really concern ourselves with that but um there is one company out there that I sent out a request to speak with and hopefully we hear back from them because I was kind of intrigued when I saw the information about them and the name of the company is called True uh True Products or True Detergent. Have you ever heard of them? It's a cleaning um it's a laundry detergent. It's called uh True Detergent. No, never heard of them before. It sounds very interesting. Yeah. And they started. Um, they started in 2012, so they're fairly new. Uh, it's a black-owned company, and I've never, ever, ever in my life ever heard of a black-owned laundry detergent company. So that's what really struck me. I was like, hmm, okay. You know, I sent them an email and everything. I received the email back asking what day and things so i you know notified them on what day and things of that nature so hopefully um i'll hear something back between today before tomorrow morning but if not we'll keep trying to uh get them on the show and everything and also you can look them up on facebook they have a facebook page so you know hey try them out hopefully they have some samplers or something that people can sample their product before they you know buy the whole thing or whatever but uh check them out see you know see what they're all about and everything so definitely i'm excited about that and then also the gospel fest for saturday i um sent out some information to uh them so hopefully we'll hear back from them and have them on the show as well so definitely i'm excited about friday it's the last day of the week we gotta definitely do it up right and i'm starting to have maybe not this week i believe next week i'm gonna have friday and saturday is off so my schedule is changing once again but hey it's all good it's all good hey, and i don't have to go in early yeah exactly that's and i don't have nice. to go into work early on sundays so i can definitely get up and really hit service and do what i gotta do and then i can go to work that afternoon so definitely god is good god man. how to makes, work it out there you go. God is the best scheduler that you will ever have. Let him schedule your day out. Most definitely. Yeah. Just give it over to God. Here you go, God. What am I going to do with this mess? <laughs> <laughs> and watch him go to, and watch him go to work. <laughs> Most definitely. Exactly. Watch him go to work. <laughs> Well, this is my favorite, 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 favorite time of the show. I really love this time of the show. Thank you for listening to Pulse of the Northern Neck Radio Show. Next up. Last word with Deandra. Hey, everybody. Normally I have a scripture that I normally give you, but I just want to give you just some encouraging words on today. Enjoy your life. I know you're facing obstacles, trials. It may be finances. It may be health. Whatever it is, enjoy life. Find something that's 